The NKS M1 has been a very loyal friend to me. Uh, optimized, tiny, with a great aesthetic to round things out. I've added in a new feet design to suit the sharp angles and also modded a tempered glass side panel as well to show off the components inside. And so with long gaming sessions into the night, the NKS M1 has sat by my right side for many, many hours and has been the perfect companion for my video editing and gaming setup. The current build is nice and powerful as well. We've got an 8700K, which has been deleted and overclocked to five gigahertz, a GTX 1080 Ti, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory clocked to 2666 megahertz, a 600 watt power supply, and some fast NVMe and SSD storage. CPU cooling though has taken some experimenting to get things right and to find the right cooler. But in the end, I've settled on the Noctua D9L with twin B9 Redux fans. And this keeps the overclocked 8700K under 75 degrees at full load. Soon though, I will be transporting the majority of the components from my NKS M1 build into a new enclosure and one that I am very, very excited for and one that I wanted to share with you guys today. Meet the Dan C4 SFX, which is soon to be the smallest computer case to facilitate a 240 millimeter liquid all-in-one cooler. Now it's not released yet, hence why this video is a preview and not an actual review. Uh, and all we really have to go off is these renderings. Now, in terms of a release date, uh, we're commonly seeing these small form factor PC cases that are sort of crowdfunded by Kickstarter. So we will be seeing a Kickstarter campaign in May. Uh, very hopefully it hasn't been official yet, but that's what we've heard from the designer. And uh, that's probably gonna hit your doorstep the third or fourth quarter of this year based off of the previous campaigns of the Dan A4 SFX, V1, V2, and soon to be V3. The C4 SFX is an expansion on the A4 SFX, which is a tiny 7.2 liter enclosure, which some of you are probably familiar with, which can house a full length two slot GPU up to 295 millimeters and a CPU cooler height up to 48 millimeters. Now there have been some amazing builds in the A4 SFX, but the main reason that I didn't buy one was the pretty restrictive CPU cooler height of 48 millimeters. It doesn't really leave you with many options for a powerful CPU. If I wanted to run something like an i7-8700K, for example, overclocking would just be completely out of the question. And I definitely would need to undervolt uh, just to run safe temperatures. With the C4 SFX though, we do have support for a 240 millimeter radiator or two separate 120 millimeter rads if you want to run AIOs for both your CPU and your GPU. Now I know a lot of you are thinking Ali the NKS M1 supports a 240 millimeter rad so what is the big deal? And for me there's two sort of reasons why I didn't go that route for uh, my build and the first one is the positioning of the radiator itself. Now the radiator is fine it's mounted with the side bracket uh, on the side panel but the problem is with the tubes and sort of fitting it around all the other components in the system which can lead to a lot of sort of stress and torque on the CPU water block and we've seen that from other people's builds in the past. Now the second reason that most of you could probably guess is that for my particular build with the tempered glass side panel is that even if if I did manage to fit a 240 millimeter liquid all-in-one cooler in there and get the tubes in there with fitting around the other components and then no stress on the CPU water block is that a tempered glass side panel would be absolutely pointless. There'd be no breathing room for the radiator and it, you wouldn't be able to see the components anyway. With the C4 SFX though, you can go with a top mounted or a bottom mounted configuration, which I think is really awesome. And that's going to be depending on the orientation of the case as the case can easily be flipped and then the front panel rotated. Now this not only allows for a top or bottom mounted radiator configuration, depending on your preferences, but it also means that you don't have to have the case on the right side of your desk to have the components showing like we're all used to. You can put the case on the left side of your desk and still see all of the components. It's still a sandwich design where the graphics card and the motherboard are stacked in a parallel orientation, but in the C4 SFX, both the motherboard and graphics card are facing in the same direction. Now, because of this design, there will be a riser card involved for the PCI Express slot. And at the moment, there's looking like there may be two riser cards shipped with the case, one for a two slot card and one which also supports a two and a half slot card, which is shifted a little bit back. Now, if you are planning on putting a powerful system in this case, like I am, water cooling is pretty much a must as if you're gonna go with air cooling for the CPU, you are limited to a CPU cool height of 62 millimeters. And even then you will be pulling air directly in from the GPU backplate, which is not ideal. So 
water cooling is definitely recommended. The case will be manufactured by Lee and Lee, just as the A4 SFX and Encase M1 are, so we can expect a fairly premium build quality for the C4 SFX, aluminium side panels, precision machining, and an optional tempered glass side panel as well. Now, in terms of color options, we can probably expect the usual from Lee and Lee, which is their brushed silver or black on their aluminium side panels. But I really hope we get a matte black option, which we can see in the renderings, because I reckon that looks totally awesome. Now for storage, we've got support for up to three, two and a half inch drives, which is pretty good for a case this size under 10 liters. Uh, there's definitely support for one uh, behind the front panel, but the other two I'm not really sure on. I think they may go in front of the power supply, but we will definitely know closer to the Kickstarter campaign. Now, in terms of airflow, I think it'll be pretty interesting to see how effective the final design is. The CPU shouldn't have any problem running on that 240 millimeter liquid all-in-one cooler at all, but GPU temperatures should be pretty interesting. And this is because the card is pushed up pretty close to that side panel. And if tempered glass results in the GPU being too hot, you could always opt for the ventilated side panel as an alternative. Pulling in air from the top with the two 120 millimeter fans has been the most suggested configuration for an airflow design and it would be interesting to see how the temperatures would differ with either a bottom or top mounted radiator configuration as well. Now let's talk about the price and when it comes to these small form factor cases that are manufactured in low volumes by a small design team, the price is usually what scares most people away and it's rumored that the price here is between 160 and 180 euros, which works out to be about 210 US dollars. Now, I can't confirm whether that's going to be the Kickstarter campaign price for you know the early bird option, or whether that's going to be the final MSRP price. But overall, I would be fairly happy to pay that amount, 210 US dollars for a case like this. If it did come with tempered glass and a two slot riser card and a two and a half slot riser card, that would be a bonus in my opinion. I know a lot of people will see that price and think it's absurdly high. And you know, you're kind of right, it is high, but it's not ridiculous. It's a very premium, high quality case that's manufactured in a low volume. So, you know, I don't think it's unreasonable for, uh, you know, the Dan design team to be asking that amount. And so, as you can probably tell, I'm pretty excited for this case. I'd love to do a custom loop in this thing, which I think would be pretty cool. Cable management will be pretty challenging in such a tightly packed case as well. So custom length cables are definitely on the menu for this build. And one of the reasons I think this case is such a big deal is because it opens up the door to high performance, small form factor systems that pretty much anyone can build. Mini ITX X299 builds are going to be actually something that people can do now. As always, I'm interested to see what you guys think of this case in the comment section below. Will you be backing the Kickstarter campaign or will you be sticking with your current case? Let me know down below and I'll chat with you all there. Thank you all so much for watching and as always, I'll see you all in the next one.